which returns a value and so we passed method show this method here to this method because it took an int argument and we returned an int and then we passed this method to this method, the third method and it took an int argument and we returned an int plus we passed the string name yeah no string word is he no but string name we passed in and up here we called it name so we can give it any name we want but just what we're saying is we're going to give as an argument a string and we give it a word um, and we name it here to be called inside this scope of this group of code the braces so the name here doesn't associate with the name we're going to pass in it's what we're going to pass in we put here and so this says we're passing this into this method and what's getting passed in is the value Charles so this is Charles so it's we've named it name and this becomes Charles and that becomes Charles we just return Charles for shortness if you remember we just want to do it quickly um, what we're going to look at today is classes we've done the first class and every program needs one method called main and that control runs the whole program actually your center your center control center so we've got two other classes we, we created and a class is starts off with the, the class keyword to let Jaffa know it's a class and then we give it a name like everything else we give a name so we can access it and a class always starts with a capital letter and if you put a small letter there then it, an error will appear because it's got to be a capital letter that's the difference between a method and a class and, and a variable and so what you've got is all the code inside the class is within the braces because that's a block of code and it's all the code is grouped together and so so this is how you separate the classes when you've done a class you've got access to all the code within these braces so there's two things that's inside a class fields uh, attributes they're called um, what we call variables and so you've got strings integers arrays um, floats etc you've got all these sort of things um, and so what you can do is you can go int name We've declared an integer, we've not given it a value, we've not initialised it yet. And we can go string, a string, um, press, just anything. And we've not given it a value, we've just declared it. So that's us got a variable that's not been created yet, we've just declared it. It's not been created until we give it a value, then it's put into memory. And then we've got a string called place. And so we can actually give it a value here. We could go zero. Initialize it so it's in memory now. And it's got the value zero, zero because we're going to add a, a true value to it. Or we could just put a, a 12 in. But normally you initialize them at zero. And it's the same with the strings. A string is always double quotes so we'll just put a space in there we've actually added a string to to the place so it's been initialized but what we've added is an empty space but that the memory is happy with that so that means the memory location is going to be um, blank and because because there's nothing in it and if you don't do that and it did put it into the memory location this is why it doesn't allow it to happen then there would be junk from a a previous program in that memory location and you would call that and, and you wouldn't know the consequences of, of what would happen it could be a, a control character um, and so that's the reason why you've got to initialize them with a value before they go into memory but we don't have to 
initialize them, create them there. We can just ident identify them, give them a name, say that look, we want an integer called name, we want a string called place. And later on we can add values to them. So just by going name equals zero. Don't know why I called it integer name, but there you go. So after it's after after you've identified it, then you can you can initialize it with a value, and that's it created. And so place we can go. And we can give it a blank space like we did before. That's it initialized, so because we're going to add a real value to it later on. Um, and so, or you, or you could actually just give it a name like YouTube. Right. But what you have, what you have in the class is, is a constructor. You can see it doesn't like this because we've not got it inside the constructor. And the constructor would be used to initialize all the variables. And so I'll show you how that's done. It doesn't like you doing that without the constructor, but you could just initialize them that way and it's happy like that. It's all in one line. But because we separated it, it doesn't like it. And you have a method called a constructor which has the exact same name as a class. And this, when you create a, when you create an object of this class, the constructor is run automatic. Without you calling this method, it, it's automatically run, and it's done because it initializes all the variables for that object. Because someone's going to get a copy of everything that's in this class when they initialize, when they they create an object of it. And so, it's called the same name, and it's called public. Well, it's not called public. We're going to make it public so everyone's got access to it. And then it's the exact same name, third class. And because it's a method, you've got brackets on it. That's the difference between the class and and the constructor. But you notice that methods, with the methods we've got a return value. And if we're not going to return anything, we put void. But with a constructor, because it's got the same name as a class, we, we, we're not going to return anything. So with a constructor, you don't put int, you don't put void, and you don't put string. Because it's a constructor, all it's, all it's going to do is initialize this class. And that's what it's called. It's called a constructor. What it is, it builds a class. Uh, if you've got um, variables in the class, then then you what you're doing is you're initializing all those variables to the values that they're supposed to be when that class is created. So there's two things you have in a class. It's like fields. It's, it's what they're called in Java, but it's attributes. It's like most mostly everybody calls them um, variables, and so the variables um, are like name, place, as we got there. It's um, like it's it's places for holding data. It's uh, data members, right? And then the other thing you have in in classes is methods. No, the methods do things. The methods do things with the data that's in the class. No, you can you can pass um, data to a class by passing it to the constructor, but we're going to go into that uh, method overloading so where you have many different constructors with the same name, but one takes no arguments and one maybe take another one argument and another may take two arguments, and so it gives you an option of accessing the, the class um, to have different um, variables and values for variables, and so. Yeah, different classes for variables. Um, but um, what you have is you have variables and then you have methods. And the methods, as I said, do things. Do things with the, the, the variables. So a variable, we've looked at methods. So you create, what it has is methods, say, public and 
void because this is not a constructor. This is the difference between this and all the other methods. This has the exact same name as the class. And you can see the exact same name. It starts with a capital letter as well. Exact same. The difference between that is this does, the class does not have um, brackets, but the constructor does. And all the code, all the code inside the constructor is within the braces, just like everything else. This is a group of code that's going to get executed when when this class is created. So a method. What we're going to do is the first method. So that's a method, and so that's going to do something, and it's going to do something which is passed to it, or it's going to do something with one of these here within the group of code, or one of these passed to it, and it can be it's going to do something or return something. So that's a method. A method does something. So there's two things you have in a class. Attributes of a class, which is variables and methods. Now, the constructor is part of the class. That initializes all the variables in the class when you create one. Remember, every time you create an object of a class, it's different copies for each object. For each object. And so that's that's why. So if I create um, an if I instance this class one time, then it inst instance it again. It'll be a copy of this for, in both occasions with separate copies. Each each object will have a separate copy of name and a separate copy of place. And so if one copy changes the value of name. The other copy does not have that change. If it changes, it has its own change. So it's individual copies of a class. And that's what objects are. And that's the difference between like, objects and st static. Static, you cannot create a copy. There's just one static. And you access it directly, not through objects. And so that's names. I'm going to put a couple, uh, that's our methods. I'm going to put a few more in here. How many is that? That's one, two, three, four. So we'll call this one second. And we'll call this one fourth. And notice yeah, methods are lowercase and the constructor is uppercase and the class is uppercase, first letter. And so you have to do this to allow Java to know the difference between methods and classes and constructors and all the rest of it. If you don't, it will throw an error. So fourth. So that's four methods. And so what I'm going to pass in here is an int. So I'm going to pass. I'm not too sure what I'm going to pass. Before before I do this, I'm going to create an object of this class. So go back to main, and this is where we call these methods. Before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object of the third class. Now, remember how we create a variable? We do int, that's a type, int, and string, that's a type, and then we give it a name. Now, we do the same with a, a class. The class is the type. so. That's not an integer, it's not a string, it is a FUD class type, if that makes sense. So what we do is we type FUD class space and we give it a name, whatever we want to call it. So we'll just do t TC, just to keep it simple, FUD class equals, and see how we have equals here, 64. Well, we're not going to do that, we're not going to assign a value to it because we're creating a class 
the values that are assigned in the constructor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the new keyword. We need to do that to say that we're creating a new object of this class because we can create millions of objects of this class. This one class can be used millions of different times, all at the same time, and each one's a different copy, so we're copying it. So what we're saying is make a new object. So new keyword, and then we type in the name of the class again. If I can spell it right. 